Katie at Kentucky Hemp Works. Uh, we're here with our fifth day of hemp homeschool. Is that right? Five days? Yeah, we're five days into this. So far, so good. Um, it's a beautiful day today. It's absolutely gorgeous in Kentucky. It's like 75 degrees. The skies are blue. The wind is blowing. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, we were going to do this lesson inside, but it's so beautiful and I was thinking about everybody at home stuck in the house. Um, maybe it's raining where you are. Maybe you can't get outside and enjoy the beautiful fresh air and all this sunshine. So uh, at the very least, maybe we can bring you a little sunshine through your, uh, through your computer or your phone at home. Um, and uh, so we're outside. I grabbed a handful of hemp seeds and we're going to talk a little bit about hemp seeds today and how we use hemp seeds for seed oil. So our company, Kentucky Hemp Works, is a processing company. But while most companies that are doing processing are processing for CBD extracts, we're a little bit different. So what we do is uh, we work with a farmer locally who grows a crop for us that's specifically for seed. So that particular crop is going to get pollinated like we talked about yesterday. It's going to have lots of pollen in the field, lots of females getting pollinated and producing seed heads and producing hundreds of seeds at a time. And then uh, once those seeds are mature and ready to harvest, uh, our grower will go out with a combine and he actually will, will combine the whole field just like the way that farmers do it with corn and soybeans and other row crops like that. Now one major difference on how uh, that combine is harvesting is that with hemp seeds you are actually harvesting while the, while the plant is still green. So when you harvest corn or you harvest soybeans with the combine, you are actually going to wait until that crop dries up and all those soybeans in their pods, they'll get dry, they'll uh, start to kind of hang off of, off of the stalk, and the beans inside, the little seeds inside will dry up. And then what that means is when the farmer cuts it and he harvests and the combine comes through and separates all those beans, goes with corn. It's already dry. When it gets picked, uh, it's ready to store. So with hemp seeds, it's a little bit different. Um, because we're picking it green, that means that all that, that uh, leaf material, all that plant material, you think about like this onion grass here. It's green. It's not dried up. It's not brown. So there's a lot of moisture in this grass right now. You can actually squeeze it and see moisture coming out of there. You can see it's kind of shiny. You can do that with any plant. But with hemp seeds, you, you can't store the seeds when there's a bunch of wet material around it. So those seeds have to go into a grain bin with a dryer or, or be dried in, in a, maybe an alternate method. Um, but what we do is it goes into a grain bin. That grain bin's got a blower in it that is gonna force air through the crop through all those seeds and it's gonna dry them out little by little over time. And once we get that moisture level down to a certain point, then we can safely um, take those seeds out. We can store them in bulk bags or another grain bin that, that's just for storage that doesn't have a dryer. Um, but until it's dried down to that point, we really can't uh, store them or else they'll mold very quickly because of all the moisture in the green. So uh, once we get our seeds in, they're, uh, they're combined, they've been dried, they're stored properly, and we bring them into Kentucky Hemp Works, we've got a seed cleaner that uh, is like a big shaker table. So if you imagine, like, uh, if you're hunting for uh, rocks in a riverbed, and you've got a screen and you're scooping up the dirt and you're sifting off all of the mud and all of the little things and you're looking for just the rocks. That's kind of similar to how uh, a hemp seed cleaner works. So there's screens on there and uh, there's three different screens and each of those screens have different hole sizes. So the seeds are designed to either fall through the holes and everything that's too big gets blown out or 
or they're designed to stay on top of the screen while everything that's too small falls out the bottom. So uh, we've got, we, we uh, you know, get our seed cleaned, we've got all our junk that's separated from the seed. And when I say junk that's separated from the seed, I mean all the things that you find in a field that you don't really want to eat. So there's, uh, what do we have out in the fields? We've got weeds, we've got seeds from weeds, plant material from weeds, we've got uh, grasshoppers, we've got ladybugs, uh, lots of insects and things like that. We don't really want those in our hemp seeds. So those are a lot of the things that'll come out. We, we sometimes will have a little pile of tiny seeds, we'll have a pile of big seeds that are bigger than hemp seeds, and we've got uh, piles of stink bugs and grasshoppers and ladybugs and all the things that live in the wild that we've got separated when we actually start working with those seeds. So once the seed is nice and clean, then we will, uh, we bring it in to our um, actual, what what's considered our, the commercial kitchen side of our operation. And in that commercial kitchen, we've got a big oil press. And what an oil press does is it acts kind of similar to um, similar to a food processor. But let's imagine that um, that seed press is, is just squeezing those seeds as hard as it can. And we're talking megatons worth of pressure here. So all those seeds are going to get squeezed until the oil actually drips out of those seeds. And now the dry parts of the seed will get extruded about out of the front of the machine. So what it's doing essentially is separating the liquid oil from the dry, fibery parts of the seed. So that's the shells, the dietary fiber, and things like that. Um, once those two components are separated, once we separate hemp seed into the seed oil and what we call the seed cake, then from there we can turn it into lots and lots of other projects, uh, products. So I'll get into a little bit more on the specifics of hemp seed oil and other uses for hemp seeds next week when we get into that. Um, but for now, I just I want to show you a little bit of seed that I've got here. So I brought some seed out, put it in a red bowl so hopefully you can see it okay. Um, but if you imagine this shell, so I'm going to try to break this shell. I don't know if I'm going to be able to just crack it open for you. Um, but this shell, sort, just sort of use your imagination. There we go. See, and, uh, well, now I dropped it. So inside of these shells, if you imagine something similar to a pistachio nut. Um, a pistachio nut is a much larger version of these hemp seeds. These seeds are so tiny. If you look at these... What might have planted a few just then. But if you look at these seeds, you can see I'm, I'm fitting, you know, hundreds of seeds in, in just the palm of my hand. And obviously with pistachios, you can't do that. But if you imagine just like a pistachio nut, uh, you can crack off that outer shell and just on the inside is the part that you eat. So uh, that's called dehulling or removing the outside hull of the seeds. So we don't do dehulling here. We do have uh, hulled hemp seeds, but we don't actually do it here. And I'll get a little bit in, more into that next week. But the reason I want to show you that is because that soft inside center is where all the hemp oil is contained within the seed. Um, that soft inside center is going to get squeezed. Uh, for the oil and then all the dry parts are going to get pushed out of the machine So um, I think we're already getting uh, close to 10 minutes here. So um, I will go into more details on all of the different uses not all of them But I'll hit some highlights of different uses for hemp seed oil and hemp seed next week um, but but for today I kind of want you to just understand how the process of uh, processing hemp seeds is much different than the process of a CBD crop or even a fiber crop. So typically when you have those three crops, you're talking about three totally different methods, procedures, planting, densities, um, just about everything is different for each crop. So um, we've got our seeds here. Uh, let's see, so for homework today, we've got a really cool assignment, we've got a worksheet, very beautiful. Once again, our amazing
amazing Alyssa, or our amazing designer, Alyssa, has come through with a beautiful worksheet. Um, and uh, so this worksheet is specifically about the different parts of the seed. Um, we've got answer keys, but you know, if you're feeling froggy, get on the internet, look up some, some of those parts and see if you can't, you know, research them and then look back at the answer key um, for help if you can't find the answers. There's also a good study, uh, that's a National Institute of Health study that talks about the benefits of hemp seed, um, how all those omega fatty acids and all those wonderful, beautiful proteins inside the seed can help us to have good cardiovascular health and good brain function, as well as strong nails, good hair. There's so many benefits, it's unbelievable, but check out that, that research, um, that'll, be, that'll be a good start. And then the third thing I have is a quick video that we did a couple of years ago, um, and it's just sort of the basics of the differences between a CBD crop and a seed crop. And, and since I'm actually out in the field in the video, whereas, you know, obviously we don't have any hemp growing right now, um, but in that video you can actually see some of the physical differences between hemp seed, uh, a hemp seed crop and a CBD crop. So the last thing I will leave you with, I hope that you were able to get outside yesterday and get on a nature walk, make some salad, dandelion salad. Um, just real quick, I want, you, want to introduce you to a couple of my new favorite weeds. These are, these are some of my new favorite weeds. So this is a nettle and uh, these beautiful purple flowers right here are so sweet and delicious. They actually taste like honey. So the, uh, the green parts of the plant are a little bit bitter, but they can be great in salads. These beautiful purple flowers are very sweet. And then I want to show you, I just discovered these and wanted to include them. These beautiful little violets are not just for show. These are a delicious snack. We'll turn that dandelion salad into a beautiful yellow and purple gourmet masterpiece and uh, not only that these flowers are absolutely delicious definitely tastes like honey go find you some flowers uh, make sure it's in a place that there's no chemical sprays nobody's ever sprayed anything that you wouldn't want to put in your body and give them a try i will see you next week for hemp homeschool